Hey guys, in this video we're going to go through how to find maximum and minimum values using different session. Now if you're enjoying this video, if you're learning something, please help me by hitting that like button. Let's get right to the lesson. So before we get into maximum and minimum values, let's understand how to use the first derivative in cases of maximum and minimum values using just a simple quadratic graph. So when we look at this graph, let's look at the blue graph first. This is the maximum point. So let's give it x1 and let's call it x1, y1. These are the coordinates of the maximum point. You can see it is the highest point on the curve. Now, which is the maximum value? Does the x coordinate have the maximum value or the y coordinate? So let's explore. The x coordinate is here. This is x1. Now this is not the maximum value because there's still larger values of x. But when we look at y1, this is the maximum value of y because there is no value of y that is larger than that. So y has the maximum value at the maximum point. Now let's look at the pink graph. This is the minimum point. So let's give it the coordinates x2, y2. Now once again, the minimum value is the y value because there is no y value lower than that value for that curve. So at the maximum and minimum points, we have the maximum value and the minimum value which is the value of the unknown in the y-axis, the variable in the y-axis. Let's start with that. So at the maximum point, you can notice that the gradient of the tangent to the curve at the maximum point. So this is our tangent. You see the gradient is just a horizontal line. The gradient of a horizontal line is zero. So at the maximum point, the gradient, which can be represented by the gradient function dy dx, this is where the first derivative comes in dy dx is the first derivative and represents the gradient function of the curve. Now, this gradient is equals to 0. dy dx will equals to negative 2mx plus n. And because this is the maximum point, we know that the gradient is 0. So dy dx is equals to 0. From this, we can solve for x. So when we solve for x, x will equals to n over 2m. So what value of n is this? This is the value of n at the maximum point when y is maximum. So where does that happen? That happens here, which means this value of x is actually x1. So how do we find y1? How do we find the y coordinate at the maximum point? We take this value of x, x1, and substitute inside the equation of the curve. So we will get y, y1 is equals to negative, so we follow this equation, negative m. Now we substitute x as n over 2m, so n over 2m squared, and then plus n times x, which is also n over 2m plus c. So this is how we get the y coordinate of the maximum point. Now notice that this y coordinate also is the maximum value. So this is how we get the maximum value of y. We find the first derivative of y. If you are looking for the maximum value of y, we find the first derivative of y with respect to another variable. And then we substitute the value of x that we find into the equation of the curve, into the equation of y, and we get y. Now, the same thing can be done for the minimum point. So at the minimum point, the same principle applies. The tangent to the curve at the minimum point has a gradient of 0. So gradient, which is equals to d by dx, is equals to 0. First derivative is equals to 0. So let's apply this. From this, we can find d by dx dy dx 
will be equals to 2px plus q. And this is equals to 0. The gradient is equals to 0. From here, we can solve x is equals to negative q over 2p. So once again, what value of x is this? This is the value of x when dy dx is equals to 0. Where is dy dx equals to 0? At the minimum point. So this x is actually x2. So once again, if we wanted to find y2, all we have to do is take this coordinate and substitute into the equation of the curve. So let's do that. So y, which will be equals to y2, is actually equals to p. So we just follow back the equation of the curve. p x square substitute x as negative q over 2p square plus q negative q over 2p plus So this value of y, this is the y coordinate at the minimum point, which is also the minimum value. So you can see the same principle applies to minimum value as well. If we want to find the minimum value of y, then what we have to do is find the first derivative of y, equate it to 0, and then when you find the value of the other variable, substitute back into the original equation, then we get the minimum value of y. By the way guys, if you are learning something, please don't forget to hit that like button, I really appreciate it. Let's look at this question. Variables m and n are related by the equation m n square is equal to 27. All right. So we have an equation for variables m and n. Given that k is this, we have another equation for k in terms of m and n. Find the values of m and n when the value of k is minimum. Alright, so first we need to find the value of m and m when k is minimum. When k is minimum, remember earlier when we were doing the graph, when y is minimum, we find the first derivative of y. So if they want the values of m and m when k is minimum, then we have to find first derivative of k. So first derivative of k. Now, the problem is in terms of what? So when we find the first derivative of k with respect to what because k has two variables here m and n now this is very important when we have two variables so we have let's write it down k is equals to m plus 2n now in the case where there are two variables on the right side of the equation you cannot find the first derivative with respect to only either one of them so you have to make the equation k in terms of either m only or n only. There cannot be two variables. There can be constants. There can be as many constants as you'd like. But there cannot be two variables on the right side of the equation if we are going to apply the simple method of differentiation. So first we need to find k in terms of m or k in terms of n. And how do we do that? By using the second equation that's given to us m n square equals 27. So let's write that down. m n square is equals to 27. Now it's easier to substitute m instead of n into the equation. So I'm going to write m as the subject of the equation. m is equals to 27 over n squared. So now I want to substitute this into this equation. So let's take this value and we substitute back into this equation to eliminate m from the equation. So we will get k is equals to 27 over n squared plus 2n. Now we have k in terms of n only. And now we can differentiate. So now we can differentiate k with respect to n. We can find the first derivative of k with respect to n. So let's do that. So before that, let's write this down as 27n to the power of negative 2. So that it's easier to apply the formula. Now we can find dk dn, first derivative of k with respect to n. Now this will be equals to negative 54 n to the power of negative 3 plus 2. Again, if you're not sure about this, I have a whole separate video on that. You can check out the video. The link is in the description. So this is equals to negative 54 over n cubed plus 2. 
how to find the value of m and n. Now remember, since k is minimum, the first derivative of k must equal to 0, based on the principle that we saw earlier with the graphs. So dk dn, this is the first derivative of k, must equal to 0. Therefore, negative 54 over n cubed plus 2 equals to 0. Now all we have to do is solve this. So here we will get 54 over n cubed equals to 2. And then you will get n cubed is equals to 54 over 2, which is 27. And is cube root of that, which is 3. So here we have solved for n. So this value of n is only valid when dk dn is equal to 0. And when is dk dn equal to 0? The first derivative of k equals to 0 at the minimum value of k. So we found n. Now how to find m? So we take n and substitute. We All we have to do is substitute inside this equation, m. So since n is 3, let's use a different color. n is 3, m is equals to 27 over n square. So 3 square, which is 9. So m is also... So this is how we find the values of m and n when k is minimum. Let's try one more question. So given that p is 6 over q plus 12r and qr square is negative 2, find the value of q and r when p is maximum. Okay, so here we have a maximum value. Again, if p is maximum, then the first derivative, the first derivative must equals to 0. So we need to find the first derivative of p with respect to another variable. But again, we have the same problem. Let's write down the equation. p is equals to 6 over q plus 12 r. So we have two variables on the right side of the equation, q and r. So we cannot differentiate p just yet. So we need to find p in terms of either only q or only r. How do we do that? Once again, all we have to do is use qr square. So qr square is equals to negative 2. And once again, it's easy to substitute q instead of r. So let's do that. q is equals to negative 2 over r square. Now that we have the value of q in terms of r, we can substitute into the equation. So what we will get is p is equals to 6 divided by negative 2 over r square plus 12 r. Simplifying further, we will get negative 3 r square plus 12 r. So now we have p in terms of r only. And now we can find the first derivative of p with respect to r. So dp dr is equals to this will be equals to negative 6r plus 12. Negative 6r plus 12. Once again, since it's the maximum value, first derivative is equal to 0. So negative 6r plus 12 equals to 0. Solve this, you will get r is equals to 2. Now when we want to find q, substitute r is 2 into this equation. q is negative 2 over r squared. So we have q is negative 2 over 2 squared. So q is negative 1 over 2. So this is the value of q and r when p is maximum. That's it for this video guys. If you've learned something, again please don't forget to hit the like button. And if you enjoy videos like this, I'm going to be producing at least one a week. So do subscribe and share this with your friends if you found it useful. I hope to see you in the next video.